Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Gavin, the Director of Public Communications for the City of Savannah, and today we are joined by representatives from Open Savannah to announce a very exciting partnership which will increase the transparency with city government, especially in the budgeting process. We're going to be hosting an upcoming event on Saturday, October 20th called City Camp Savannah, the City Budget and Beyond. So here with us we have City of Savannah Mayor Eddie DeLoach, our Mayor Pro Tem, Alderwoman Carol Bell, also Melissa Carter, who is our Office of Management and Budget Director, and Carl Lewis from Open Savannah. We're going to begin with some comments from Mayor DeLoach. Hello, everybody. It's a great day to be in the city of Savannah, and we got another great opportunity here for the city of Savannah. Every month, you get up and you say, I got to balance this budget. Only get so many dollars coming from the wherever you work, you got to make sure it fits in the course of that month, in the course of that year, in the course of your life. Well, this is what we're talking about, but it's on the city of Savannah scale. And so we're going to let the citizens have an opportunity to see how the budget's developed. Whenever you start going and looking at a budget and you start saying, well, you know, I really feel strongly about this point here. I really feel this is an important thing we need in our budget. But then you go and you look at your coins and you realize, well, don't quite have the money I thought I had. And then you said, well, what can I cut? That is, the, that is what we do in balancing budgets in city government is we try to prioritize the most important things and then we try to fit them into a budget and that means that we end up taking from Peter and putting it in Paul's pile. That being said, we look forward to the citizens participating in this. We've got a great opportunity to work with the Code of America Brigade, and they're going to bring a, an app to you that's going to give you an opportunity on a free, on a, on an opportunity on, to where you can go in and you can help us balance a budget. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a, a learning experience for you. It'll be a great experience for you. It'll be something that might possibly we can use from you if you got some ideas that work out. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over and let Carol Bell have a comment, or, or Melissa. Melissa, 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 come on up and have a comment, because she's the one that's got the sense about all this. Thank you, Mayor Deloach. Good afternoon. Along the theme of One City, One Direction, Savannah Forward, Collectively, citizens and all of our um, stakeholders within our community and city staff, as well as your elected officials, developed a strategic plan together. And the process of engaging our citizenry to now move that into the budget development process is just, in my view, astronomical and it gives us a great opportunity so I for one as the city's chief budget officer am very excited to partner with Open Savannah and to all of you who are watching the citizens of Savannah our stakeholders our businesses um, as well as those visitors that may be watching on how we are doing business in Savannah moving forward and so the City Camp Savannah event to be held Saturday October 20th is an opportunity for us to engage each other collaboratively. What, what issues can we circle around and talk about together collectively between community and city, and city staff members to come up with a common solution? We want to hear from our youth, middle school age and high school age students. We really want to make sure that they have a voice. And during this event, we are listening to your voice. So please, come out, participate, Register for the event in advance. Um, plan, plan to spend the day with us. We promise it, it to be a fun event, one built on engaging each other, listening collaboratively to your needs, your desires, your wants, as well as to understand how the city does develop its budget cycle. What are those um, parameters that the city is married to? What state laws, laws and regulations we have to abide by? And how can we, again, support our strategic plan that collectively we put in place together? And we want to make sure that we don't lose sight of that. That we want to make sure that we all realize that we all have ownership in the city of Savannah being in, uh, going in one direction, moving forward together. Thanks. 
I'd like to turn it over to Carl with Open Savannah. I can't thank Carl enough for all his hard work and his team's hard work for partnering with us. Yeah, it's, um, thank you, Melissa. It's definitely been a team effort. Um, uh, so when we first started Open Savannah, a little over a year and a half ago, um, we are a local uh, all-volunteer organization that uh, believes in restoring civic trust, specifically in local government, um, because civic trust is what sparks participation and participation is required for democracy to work. Um, so when we first started this, one of the first questions that we had, our first big event that we held, um, was why isn't the budget online somewhere for us to find? And to the credit of the city, the, bu this, the budget was online for them to find. But it was in a PDF that was 300 and something pages long. And if you really wanted to get to understand it, you had to study it for a really, really, really long time. And I've studied it a long time, and I think I'm pretty smart, maybe? I don't know. But um, I like to think that sometimes. But there's parts I don't even f still fully understand, because it's a very complicated issue that um, has a lot of nuances, and that has a lot of trade-offs, and it's a balancing act. Um, so when we were talking about what we wanted our big fall event to be, we thought about doing something that was more technologically driven, where people got together and built the sort of technology. But when we thought about what like, the core issues were that we were facing in our community, um, this is something that came up over and over again, is like people didn't understand the budgeting process, or they had lost trust in city government to fulfill that. So um, we think that we think that we're better than that as a city, that we can do this together and we can get along and we can have civil discussion about things, not just when we're angry at a city council meeting about something being cut, but that we can do it proactively before that and um, have deliberative democracy beforehand. Um, so that's what the, really the goal of city camp is. And the, um, it's, we, it's called an unconference. And um, if you're not familiar with what the term unconference means, um, it's basically just a fancy way of saying that you set the agenda. <laughs> so we all set the agenda. Um, if you want to pr present a breakout session, you can sign up for that now at citycampsab.org. Um, if you want to lead a lightning talk, those will be voted on actually the day of. So largely participants will set the agenda for this event. So it, it's, it's your chance to speak. It's your chance to be heard. It's your chance to talk and have dialogue. Um, and everyone will be peers at the event. Um, it's not a top-down initiative. It's, it's a bottom-up initiative. Um, um, Open Savannah is entirely volunteer driven. And um, we just, we, we're citizens, residents of this community who want to do and use our skills all as much as we possibly can to um, really just help bridge the divide that sometimes we see. Um, so uh, actually right now, if you want to go ahead and get involved and um, make sure that you are informed of when the app actually launches, um, if you text City Camp SAV, that's C-I-T-Y-C-A-M-P-S-A-V to 797979, um, that'll loop you in there and then we'll shoot you a text with a link to the app once we've got the latest budget numbers and scenarios in there. Um, because the budget process is still ongoing and um, there's still some decisions, being, or not decisions being made, but some things to analyze. Um, we're still trying to get the numbers all quite right in there. But um, we'll have that um, within the next two weeks, definitely. Um, but, uh, and we're also seeking sponsors for this event, so um, yeah, that'd be great too. Thank you. Good afternoon. So as a former budget analyst, this is extremely exciting for me. A few years ago, just a few years ago, I began my career. Why are you all laughing? Uh, I began my career in local government in the budget department. And I am very passionate and very excited about this because I think this is an opportunity for the citizens of our community to become engaged, a civic engagement at, at its very best, to become engaged in how your taxpayer dollars are spent. So it's an opportunity for you to, one, learn what we do in the preparation of the, a spending plan for local government, but it's also an opportunity for you to have a voice and in that learning process, I think it would give our citizens a greater, part, a greater appreciation 
for those tough decisions we as a uh, as staff, Melissa and her group, those tough decisions that they have to make before they even present a balanced budget, which we have to do by law before the end of the year each year. And you will also understand why it's almost impossible sometime for citizens or organizations to come to us mid-year and almost demand that we fund your favorite initiative because you think it's the right thing to do and these are our monies. Well, I think if you come to City Camp Sav on October 20th, budget and beyond, I promise you, you will not leave that place knowing, without knowing how these decisions are made and how you can have a voice in it at the appropriate time. So I would like to encourage the pub public to come out and learn what happens in this process and learn how you can really have a voice in those decisions that are made. Uh, as the mayor said, you do this on a monthly basis for your personal uh, budget. So this is an opportunity for you to have uh, participation, be engaged in the process for the spending or the the financial plan for the city of Savannah. So I encourage you to come out. It's really not boring, but it really is tough. And it's, it's getting tougher because we have so many needs as a community and the dollars are shrinking. So thank you and we appreciate it. Are you gonna have to take questions? Yeah, we'll take a few questions. Um, Eric, I cannot. How do you anticipate this um, budget year Let's coming start. along? Yeah. Do you think we're gonna have a challenging year up ahead um, with the elimination of the fire fee? Um, based on the um, fiscal challenges we've been addressing throughout this fiscal year, we undoubtedly will have to put our heads together to set forth a balanced budget for FY 2019. Um, each budget year, there are a lot of challenges. Um, there are so many competing needs. Um, we have priorities um, that have been set forth in strategic plan that take a little bit of, um, you know, working around because as just as in your own personal family budget, your costs do increase every single year. Um, sometimes your income changes from month to month, year to year, um, as well as your expenses. And so um, the city budget um, is, is not different. We still have to deal with those um, um, inflationary costs, um, competing challenges and priorities in order to maintain our service levels. And so that's not something that we, we can go any year without having to address. So um, I think um, FY19 will be just like it was in FY18, just like it was in FY17, um, we are experiencing, as um, Alder Women Carol Bell said, our revenue growth is shrinking um, and is not pacing with our expenditure growth. And so um, unless we get those things in line, we're gonna continue to have uh, those challenges. But um, I think collectively as a group, within the community, having citizens come and get engaged through the event, the City Camp Savannah event. I mean, that, that day is centered around solutions mm -hmm. and resolving issues. And we like to kind of partner with the citizens and the community as a whole to come up with wh which ways can we address some of these challenges that we foresee for FY19. That's uh, going to be a one-day conference. Yes, sir. Budget issues are complicated as it is. Most people cannot even manage their own personal household budgets. How much of the conference is going to be actually educating people to let them know exactly how the city makes decisions? And after doing all that, will there be time? Or, or, you know, will it be feasible for them to actually be able to participate with some of their ideas at that point? Oh, definitely. What we have um, um, planned out for this event is half of the day, the first half of the day will be educating um, the participants on how the city does develop its budget. So first you have to understand how, the, I mean, you know, the process and the methodology that's used in order to come up with any solutions in terms of to potential problems. The second half of the, um, of the day is based on hearing from the participants and, and collaborating um, whether it may be in focus groups around a particular issue, but as Carl, as Carl mentioned in his, um, in his speaking, um, his, in his talking points, 
that if there were any lightning breakout sessions that any citizen that's participating wants to have, please contact us. And um, if there's a particular particular concern or particular issue that you want to make sure that we talk about that day, we're open. Again, this is to be collaborative and engaging. Um, we don't want to. We won't want to make assumptions that we know all of the issues, right, that our community and our citizens are um, concerned about. We want you to tell us, and we want to rally around those issues together to resolve them. But I don't want you to lose sight of something um, that Melissa said earlier. By law, legally, there are certain costs that we, as a local government, have to recognize. Also, I view this as a day of education. Most of our citizens will look at um, one particular thing and they think, oh, the city has all this money because you see tourism growing at, a, at you know, just an ast astronomical growth and think all that money, everything that comes from tourism comes to the city of Savannah. That, I think we can dispel that myth by telling you, by letting the, the um, public know exactly what that split is. We also can let you know that when we talk about the city's budget process, we're not just talking about one fund. Most of our citizens really can relate to the general fund, but that is the base, the core fund for city operations. However, there are several other funds that are, well, for one thing, enterprise funds that really we don't get any money from the water and sewer fund, for instance, because that is an enterprise fund, which means that any money that's derived from the water and sewer fund has to be used for water and sewer expenses. The same thing for parking services. I'm pretty good. I can remember yes, that a few are. years. <laughs> okay, are. so no, I think the good thing about this process is that w uh, the citizens will have an opportunity to learn what is this mystery about city budgeting. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, demystify it, yeah. Demystify it and augment it as well. So d to really understand why it's like, what. Why it's so complicated? Because there's a lot of state laws that do mandate that it be a certain way. And then B, um, augment it with what, they, what, what residents feel like should be the priorities. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a really huge component of it. And um, all this stuff that we're talking about is available um, at citycampsav.org. Um, and if you want to sign up for a breakout session or a talk, just go to citycampsav.org. There's navigation there. They'll tell you how to do that. There's more information on the event and how you can get involved in actually helping lead the event, if you would like. Can you talk about, sorry. Sorry. Lewis. Can you talk a little bit about the app? So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a game-based app in which you simulate the city budget. We built it um, in the last few weeks as, as volunteers. Um, but it basically just, you go through each service department and you decide whether you would, if you were deciding the budget, increase or decrease funds for each department, each service um, area. As well as when you re re reach the end of it, um, if you're over, you know, if your um, expenses exceed your revenue, you may be asked to, for some trade-offs, <laughs> and it'll ask you what your trade-offs would be. Do you anticipate this having any influence on the city's budget, or is so, it a learning tool? Kind of so we hope that we'll definitely inform it, sure. because all the results will be available for the public to view online of what people have submitted. So we hope that it will inform it. Um, again, it's not directly going to, I mean, a lot of these things do ha have to happen so far in advance that we can't say, oh, it's definitely going to change the 2019 budget line for line. But um, it, it will do a great deal in informing, um, maybe ho hopefully informing um, city leaders about what residents' pr current priorities are um, and um, getting a better, just really just reinventing the way that, that governments do public feedback in a large way. because. Um, it's, it's always been done a certain way for a certain, certain, so long. And um, there's a lot of people we've left out of that process, I, I feel like, and we've, we've talked about this, um, that whenever we don't announce things w well in advance and whenever we don't make sure that we reach out to all members of all communities mm -hmm. um, and make sure that we're inclusive in that process, then we're not really getting the true gamut of public feedback that we could, we could and we should. We, we have to, because we're all in this together. One of many things to come. So yeah, you know, it, like you asked yeah. about like is this necessarily going to be you know everyone's needs addressed in the, in the 2019 budget? Maybe not, but this is not a one and done event. This is 
kind of the beginning of, of where the city is headed for more transparency. What sort of follow up will there be after this one? Well, nice conference? So you, the, the app will be available for mm -hmm. public feedback and you can use it to submit your ideal budget after the event, yes. Okay. It is also our hope that after we tally everything up, um, most likely within the first quarter of FY19, there will be a report that goes out to the public saying how many participants in, um, were engaged in this process. What were some of um, their chief concerns? Um, I really want to ensure and maybe stress the fact that the city collectively developed a strategic plan. The mayor and aldermen have set that strategic plan in place. And I know we, we, we're using the term priorities, um, but the strategic plan priorities that were select, um, selected collectively are the priorities that the FY19 budget will be based around. There are going to be, um, for c certain stakeholder groups, one priority may stand out um, more to them than another priority, for instance. Um, but I want to make sure that the, everyone understands the FY19 budget will be based on our strategic plan priorities as a whole. And those priorities were developed by not just the mayor and alderman, but? Yes. Those priorities were developed collectively by our citizenry, our business stakeholders, as well as our elected officials and all of our residents. So let me throw, just say too, by way of information, that this isn't unique. This process, participatory budgeting, is not unique. We've, we're learning that other cities across the country are doing this. Now granted, any number of those cities are much smaller than us, so true participatory budgeting may occur in, the, in its purest fact. Uh, you know, it's purest. Different levels. Yeah, different mm -hmm. levels. So this is the beginning. This is not an all, you know, an all, in all sort of situation, but I can see this process improving each year, especially as long as we have the tech geeks like Carl and his group around, they can help us and keep and keep us, um, you know, engaged in this kind of process. If that's what the citizens like, because the constituents, constituents, we have to respond to your requests. When is the FY19 budget finalized? The FY19 um, budget proposal will not um, quite go out until November of this year. And um, by law, our FY19 budget must be finalized and adopted by our mayor and alderman by December 31st, 2018. And it goes into effect January 1st, 2019. Um, and that's a good question. Um, the feedback that we receive through this process, again, will guide um, information utilized to develop the FY19 budget. But just as Carl said, um, there will likely not be a one-for-one, line-for-line -line adjustment made just due to the timing um, and all and the magnitude of everything that our mayor and elected officials have to go through um, in order to make sure that they are confident enough in this, in this spending plan for 19 before they vote. And, and so, um, as all the women Bell said, this is, this is day one, per se. Um, we really have a lot of hopes um, in future years to expand our civic engagement in our budget development process. It, to me, it, it aids to our transparency. It gives the budget team itself, it gives the budget team specifically that information um, from a holistic group, from all of our um, citizens and all of our stakeholders, rather than just the, those citizens or stakeholders that are most voiceful. Yeah. At times, we, we get our information from those that are so engaged, they show up to council meetings or they may show up to a town hall meeting. But by no means is that the majority of our, of our population, okay? And so we really want to make an informed decision when developing our budget recommendations to our mayor and aldermen. Um, and the budget team itself makes a recommendation to the city manager first and foremost. And so um, this is a way for us to expand this over the um, over future years and I think it really will help the budget team itself meet its strategic goal which is part of our strategic plan that by 2021 the city budget will 100 percent align with the strategic priorities of this community and so this is our way of doing that starting this process let me add and I think it's really important as this is the first time we've done this 
and this will be a learning experience not only for the citizens but for us also. Mm -hmm. But the priorities were set last year. Mm -hmm. That's important to realize that we go through a process, we had a number of meetings, people came in, everybody presented their program, what they felt like was important. Now, that's set down on paper, it's in, and everybody knows that program. Now, when you go to start working these uh, app, you work this app, and you start figuring out, well, you know, this and that and the other, you have to go back to, to the strategic plan mm -hmm. yes. and realize that this is a five-year projection, a 15-year projection, a 20-year projection that the citizens formed mm -hmm. whenever we had those meetings. Mm -hmm. So as you come into this process, you have to plug into that point to go forward. You can't just come in from the side and say, oh, I got a better idea, because <laughs> that better idea has already left. We'll be glad to listen to ideas, but the citizens have told us what they are interested in, and we're going to try to move that program forward. And if there's a way we can do it better by using the app and by having people participate, the next time we do one of these strategic planning programs, We'll have more folks that participate in that. We could do it online, possibly, with some ideas of mm -hmm. long-term, how do we do this in the budget, get an online uh, app that gives us the opportunity to bring some other ideas where people might not show up for a meeting. They might put something down on the app that we can incorporate into that program so that we do get com everybody participating. But the long-term goal is to take the strategic plan that we put in place with the five or six ideas that we had set up originally and move forward with it because a lot of times people forget long term when you dealing with issues. I came in with the idea we had a real crime problem. Well, if the crime problem is not as bad today as it was three years ago, people forget that. But you can't forget that. And when you're budgeting, you have to plan that away. And so that's going to be the learning process that the citizenry has to have. We have to have X number of dollars in place at all times to make this thing function. And that's what we'll learn as a citizens and as, a, well, I've learned as a uh, mayor and council, I think we've all learned what it takes and the cost of doing the things that we want to do. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for taking the time. And we look forward to the opportunity that this presents because it's going to be an interesting process. October 20th. Thank right? you, Where is that at? Civic Center, Civic Ballroom. Ballroom. What are the hours? So from uh, 8.30, nah. breakfast 8.30, and to um, 5. To 5. 5.